This small silhouette of an acrobat gripping onto a metal bar, as well as the stand that goes along with him, were both carved using my Shapoko Pro desktop CNC router. All of the components were designed to fit together perfectly, making assembly extremely easy once they're all carved. And once everything is assembled, not only does it look great as a display piece, but the function of it is pretty fun as well. In this tutorial video, I'll take you from start to finish and show you exactly how I made it. And for those of you with CNC machines at home, check the video description for the detailed CNC files. Now let's jump into it. To start this project off, I'm looking through my wood pile to find 3 quarter inch stock as well as quarter inch stock to use for this project. Because we're using the CNC, all I need to do is cut down my material according to the cut sheet, making sure everything is nice and square. This is a really simple project and only requires three different size components to be cut on the machine. Because of that, all I needed to use were my miter saw and my table saw to cut our components down to size. Once that's finished, I'm left with three pieces of wood that will eventually become my base, the main body and supports, and the rails. In addition to those parts, we'll also need to use some small dowels, but don't worry about that until the assembly process. For now, let's jump into our CAD program and assign some toolpaths so we can cut these out on the CNC. Because this is a beginner-friendly project, you'll only need to use two different toolpaths to carve out all of the components. You'll notice that on the base component shown here, the first toolpath pockets out those four areas in the middle, and then the second toolpath is an outside contour with included tabs that will cut out the overall shape of the base. Once you have your toolpaths assigned, you can clamp your workpiece to the machine, set your zeros, and then start carving. This first component only uses an eighth inch down cut bit to accomplish all of its toolpaths, and is a really quick carve, only taking about seven minutes to complete. Once that was done carving, I realized I made my first mistake on this project. You'll see here that the bit didn't travel all the way through the workpiece, and that's because I must have measured my thickness incorrectly. In order to fix that, I'm going to bring it over to the drum sander and remove material bit by bit until my entire component is exposed. Once that's done and I can clearly see where the tabs are, I can take my multi-tool and remove the piece from the stock material. And once I have that separated, I'll head over to the router table to add a fancy edge to make it look a little bit more professional. And with the base finished, I'll set it aside and move on to working on our next component, the main body and supports. This component is secured to the machine differently than the base was because we're going to cut all the way through it, but we're not going to use tabs. So in order to hold all the pieces in place, we're going to use double-sided tape. As far as assigning toolpaths goes, the same toolpaths, pockets, and contours are used for this component. The only difference is that a 16th inch down cut bit is required in addition to the 8th inch down cut bit that was used before. The 8th inch down cut bit is used for the majority, but the 16th inch down cut bit is required to get into the tight spaces in between the acrobat's elbows. Luckily this time I measured the stock thickness correctly, so when I removed the material, the tape wasn't even cut all the way through, which makes sanding a bit easier because the bit doesn't burn the adhesive into the side of the wood. But before we even get to sanding, we first need to carve our last component, the rails. Just like the main body and the supports, the rails are secured to the CNC using double-sided tape. This component only uses the 8th inch down cut bit to pocket out the small holes for wooden dowels later on, and also cut out the actual shape of the rails. Like I mentioned earlier, this is an extremely easy project and you only need those two toolpaths as well as the two CNC bits. Once that's done carving and removed from the machine, we can gather all of our components and get ready to start sanding them to our desired grit. Because this is just a toy and is not fine woodworking, I ended up sanding everything up to 220 grit sandpaper, which was more than smooth enough in the end. And with that, we can finally move on to the assembly process for this project. I mentioned it earlier in the video, but the first thing that you'll need to do is cut down your 3 16 inch dowels to size. You'll need four one inch wooden dowels and one metal dowel that is approximately two and three quarter inch in length. Just make sure to file down the edges of the metal dowel so there's no sharp edges on the final product. From there, with wooden dowels in hand, we're going to start by lining up our rails and supports using the included pinholes. 
The most important thing to remember on this step is to make sure that the rails are positioned on the inside of the supports once they're attached to the base. If this is done incorrectly, then the Acrobat won't have a smooth path and will keep bumping into the supports as he travels down his ramp. So once you double check that everything's lined up correctly, grab some wood glue and start clamping together the rails and supports by lining up the two dowels on each component. Make sure to wipe away all the excess wood glue once everything is clamped nice and tight. And after the wood sets, come back with a flush trim saw and make everything nice and smooth. One quick note here, don't be a total dummy like I am and saw in the direction of your hand because, well, things like this will happen. Luckily I survived that vicious attack and was able to clean everything up with the use of some sandpaper. In the end, no one will ever know the difference. With the rails and supports finally complete, we can now insert them into the base. After making sure I had them lined up correctly, I ended up securing them into place using CA glue, but you could use wood glue if you wanted to. After that, our next step is to assemble the acrobat by securing his arms in place by using that metal rod that we cut down earlier. At first I tried to use epoxy weld to hold everything together, but that ended up being a huge mistake because it got all over the wood and was impossible to sand later on. Because of this, I ended up going back to the CNC and carving out new components that I later assembled using CA glue. This ended up working out a whole lot better. And with our components assembled, we can finally move on to the finishing stage. I ended up using a few coats of spray lacquer to finish this project, and if you're going to do that, a quick note is to use some 800 grit sandpaper in between coats. It'll just make sure that everything is nice and glossy smooth once it's all finished. The only thing you need to do once everything is cured is take some sandpaper and rough up the top sides of the rails so that there's a little bit more friction for the acrobat to spin down his ramp. It's also a good idea to rough up the metal bar that he's holding onto. But once that's done, we're completely done with this project and you can give him a push and see what happens. See you next time.